thank you to the Westminster Abbeys. That's their new name. Isn't that great? I love it. I also want to just go cha-cha-cha before we even get started. Let's pray together. Holy and merciful God, you know us better than we know ourselves. Let us in this time open our eyes and our ears to your word. Not so much that the words I speak may be heard, but that your word would be. Amen. Nearly everyone has a hero. Someone, it might be someone you know, and it might simply be somebody you admire. My heroes are my grandparents, all four of them for different reasons. One, however, knew by his own experiences, absolutely, positively, who he was and whose he was. And therein lay his confidence. It was my grandfather, Wynn. My grandfather was raised as a missionary kid in what is now known as South Korea. He came to the United States when he was 17 and went to Duke University and then Princeton Seminary. And there he met my grandmother, another missionary kid who was raised in China. They married and while they waited for an overseas assignment as missionaries, he pastored a small church up the Hudson River. Not too long and a call came to go to China. My mother was a little girl, about nine months old, and they went to China. After about two, two and a half years, the world was changing, and Japan was pressing on the Chinese borders, and the Board of Foreign Missions of many denominations decided it would be safer if the women and children would come home. And so my mother and her brother and my grandmother boarded a ship for that one month long journey back to the United States, leaving my grandfather behind. And not long after that, he became a prisoner of war. He and about 500 other men were imprisoned in a camp. Most of them were foreign missionaries, foreign humanitarian workers, priests, bishops, and the like. They were tortured. And the stories that he told me, I will not share with you, except for one. The Japanese would grind glass into the rice. And when you got one cup of rice every few days, it was really difficult to have the patience to brush every single grain of rice off to make sure there was no glass. Some men didn't have the patience to do that or the strength anymore and they gobbled up the rice, they were hungry, and they died. My grandfather was pretty stubborn, and he brushed every single piece of rice off. One day, he was called into the commander's office, the camp commander. He was pretty sure, because he'd seen it be done before, that there were charges that were gonna be trumped up against him, and he was gonna be shot on the spot for some ridiculous thing some chore he didn't do, a piece of rice that fell to the floor. When he walked in, he found a general, a Japanese general standing there. Well, now he was pretty sure that this was gonna be it. The general said, I've been looking over the roster and I see that your name is Paul Wynn. Is that your name? And he said, yes, it is. He said, are you of any relation to Stephen Wynn? My grandfather said, well, that's my uncle. Now he was sure this was the end. The commanding general came up and looked him straight in the face and he said, I can't hold you here as a prisoner any longer. I'm setting you free. My grandfather 
you'd think would just say thank you and walk out the door. Oh no. He boldly asked why. The general told him the story of how his parents had been peasants and a man came to their town and established a school so they could learn to read and write in their own language. It was a Presbyterian missionary named Stephen Wynn. Without that education, this man would not have gotten an education. And in the army, the way it was set up then, he would never have become an officer. And as you may know, in the Asian culture, what you've done to a family lasts a long time. The man didn't feel he could hold my grandfather as a prisoner when his family had allowed his, this man's family a life. So he decided to let him go. Well, my grandfather, like I said, wasn't shy. He said, I won't go unless you release everyone. And he said, all right. So those that were able were released and not all of them were physically able to leave. After two and a half years, my grandfather came home at 90 pounds and began a work of recovery and eventually ended up back in Japan as a missionary for 25 years. Paul writes to the Hebrews, Remember those early days after you first saw the light? Those were the hard times. Kicked around in public, targets of every kind of abuse. Some days it was you, other days your friends. If some friends went to prison, you stuck by them. If some enemies broke in and seized your goods, you let them go with a smile, knowing they couldn't touch your real treasure. Nothing they did bothered you. Nothing set you back. So don't throw it all away now. You were sure of yourselves then. It's still a sure thing. But you need to stick it out, staying with God's plan so you'll be there for the promised completion. And then Paul quotes Old Testament saying, it won't be long now, he's on the way. He'll show up almost any minute. But anyone who's right with me thrives on loyal trust. If he cuts and runs, I won't be very happy. But we're not quitters who lose out, oh no. We'll stay with it and survive, trusting all the way. One of the most important attributes, personal attributes anybody can have is confidence. And our world places a really high value on it. We 